Right. Good morning. Uh, I hope our voice is clear without any disturbance to you all. So uh, uh, let me uh, introduce the team to you. This is the first program being done by Indian Institute of Chemical Technology in collaboration with Indian Development Foundation under the Jigyasa program, which is a program initiated by the central government for uh, inculcating scientific temper in children. So this is the first program we are doing with uh, Indian Institute of Chemical Technology, which is a premier CSIR institute in Hyderabad. And uh, they have done excellent work in many of the fields. And one of the inventions and one of the, uh, what do you call the uh, area of work, what is uh, giving more results is in Hyderabad uh, what do you call the So we would like uh, area to share of work, what the whole is uh, uh, giving more results is in Hyderabad itself. So start the presentation and like area of work, what the team in CSA uh, more results is in Hyderabad itself. So start the presentation and like area of work, what the whole is the team in CSA more results is in Hyderabad itself. So area of work, what the whole is the team in CSA more results is in Hyderabad itself. And associate director from ARCI Hyderabad. We have a few scientists also joining us from NGRA and uh, ARCI in due process now. They have already confirmed it. So let me hand it over the session to Dr. Watsala. So the guidelines are we will have a one hour session. If you have a pen and a pencil and a notebook, please note down your doubts during the presentation, whatever we have. We'll give some time in the end where all the doubts will be cleared. I hope I am clear. My name is Sanjay Ram. I am from Indian Development Foundation. Thank you very much. Over to you, Dr. Vatsala Garu. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Sanjay Ji. Uh, good morning, children. Uh, so, yeah. So, before we start our session, I am Dr. Vatsala, scientist working at Indian Institute of Chemical Technology, in short, IICT. Okay, before I present, I would like to speak a little bit about IICT and the council. Yeah, please. Uh, you will see a PowerPoint presentation. Yeah. Here you see, so we research lab IICT, you can see in the India map, uh, uh, in the area of Telangana, you can see IICT is written there. So all over India, we have around 37 such research labs. They come under this Council of Scientific and Industrial Research. The headquarters is at Delhi. And the president of our council is the prime minister. So uh, presently, the president of CSIR is our honorable prime minister, Sri Narendra Modi ji. And Science and Technology Minister is the Vice President. And Dr. Kale Selvi, she is the Director General. She heads all the research labs. And you can see Dr. Srinivas Reddy, he is Director of our Institute. And let me tell you, most of the time, children think that research is done only in only some in areas, some areas, areas, areas of, of uh, space such as development of spacecraft and things like that but it is not so even they are research is being done in many many such areas now i'll introduce you to some of the research labs so in hyderabad itself we have three research labs one is ccmb where uh, the biological sciences are uh, uh, research is being done in this area there's another lab ngri where research in earth sciences that is related to physics it is being done and you see you in bangalore there is one research lab ncl uh, sorry nal so here research is being done in aeronautical that is we develop spacecrafts and also cftri you see the research is being done in food technology and if you go to the north then we have many labs where research is being done in medicinal plants and aromatic plants 
so perfume is extracted from many of these aromatic plants and also you see there is one research lab in tamil nadu sikri here research is being done in the area of electrochemistry that is batteries visit which, which is my research area so like this research research is being done in all the areas of sciences like biological science chemical science engineering science information science physical science so children what i want to tell you is you may be knowing research is uh, 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 studying in depth about a subject so if you are interested in doing research in this exciting areas there is another lab in nio where research is being done in oceanography okay and uh, even uh, minerals and materials which is in bhuvaneswar and also in uh, jammu here our uh, himalayas have so many uh, useful resources so research is being done that in that area so if you are interested in doing research in such areas just get your phd degree and you can join yeah next slide please sorry so this i i would like to tell something about this program called jigyasa this program jigyasa it's a initiation from a honorable prime minister now the word jigyasa means to create inquisitiveness to create curiosity in you towards scientific you know we want to create that curiosity towards science so this in this program what we do is uh i request all the schools to please mute otherwise there is disturbance there is a request please mute all your system here yeah. mute mute please uh, can we mute yeah it is better be mute children we are muting just hold on since there was so much of disturbance i thought i'll mute all the so when there is interactive session then we'll unmute and we can hear you right so i was talking about this program called jigyasa jigyasa here this is where students and scientists they connect with each other you see science is used in all walks of life okay you see we have progressed this much because of science so to create inquisitiveness or the uh, curiosity towards science we do this program so in one such program we are connecting you to our uh, institute and a team in our institute who are working in this area of converting the vegetable waste to value added products so children uh, in this program they are uh, sometimes students visit our institute also and we also visit uh, the schools and we do even some online sessions it is online offline so based on a uh, uh, availability as well as the convenience this program can be uh, go ahead and now i will uh, connect you to the team who are working in this area of uh, conversion of vegetable waste to value added products dr gangadni rao he will be who is the chief scientist and who heads this team he will be with us after some time he is busy with some research so dr samina will go ahead with this technology of conversion of waste to wealth yeah yes samina coach samina ji thank you ma'am for waiting first introduce yourself उनको इंट्रोड्यूस करने
Okay. Thank you, ma'am, for introducing us to all the schools here. And good morning, one and all. Good morning, children, and good morning, scientists who have joined us today for the online lecture. I am Dr. Samina, working as a scientist here in IICT in Bioengineering and Environmental Sciences Division of IICT in Hyderabad. So today, the online lecture in the online lecture, I am going to discuss about a, one of the most happening technology in India, where the aim is to convert organic waste to biogas and biomanure. It is one of the CSIR IICT's technological interventions that has created huge impact in the society, helping the bulk waste generators to create wealth out of waste. So. Dear friends, today the contents in the online lecture will be, I will first introduce you to biogas. What biogas is, you need to understand first in order to understand about the biogas technology that IICT has developed. And as you will be very curious to know how it actually works in the field, I have provided you a video where you can see the waste is getting converted into energy and nutrients. And the technology that is behind it, I'll be explaining you in detail. And what are the applications that you can do with biogas will be showcased to you today through video and presentation mode. And by the development of this technology by CSR IICT and its implementation in the society, how it has created environmental impact and how it is creating social benefit to all the people in the society, you will be knowing it today in the lecture. Then the, the interesting part comes at the end where you can inter interact with us by questioning us about this technology. And if you are very much inquisitive about knowing some more details, you can directly shoot your questions to us. So moving on to the first uh, element of today's presentation, we, I'll introduce you to biogas. What is biogas, children? I hope you have heard it. You might be reading it in newspapers. You might be seeing it in the television that how important it is to convert solid waste or any kind of liquid waste to energy. So basically, biogas is a renewable energy. I know, I hope you understand what is the meaning of renewable energy and non-renewable energy. To just uh, give you an idea, renewable energy is something which is, uh, produced from a renewable resource. There is no end for that renewable resource. If you see the fossil fuels, the energy that is that is produced from the fossil fuels is non-renewable. Whereas, for example, if you produce energy from any kind of organic waste, that is a renewable energy. And how it is produced? It is produced through a process called anaerobic digestion. It is otherwise called as biomethanation. And what are the raw materials that are used to produce biogas is the organic waste materials. Now, if you use anaerobic digestion for the conversion of organic waste to biogas, what happens there? What is the process that is involved in it is the question that should come to your mind. Then the answer is here. The organic waste that is which is composed of carbohydrates, proteins or lipids that are broken down into simpler molecule, molecules by the organism. Now, I'll relate this uh, process to the digestion process that happens in our body. We eat some food, then the energy is generated in our body to do our daily activities. In a similar manner, in the anaerobic digestion uh, digester, the food is the organic waste. And if we give organic waste to the anaerobic digester, it produces energy in the form of biogas. Now, what is anaerobic? Though I hope you are familiar with the word anaerobic. Anaerobic means in the absence of oxygen. The process happens in the absence of oxygen. Now, what happens if anaerobic digestion takes place in the digester for the treatment of waste? It produces a gaseous mixture which contains methane, that is CH4, carbon dioxide, CO2, along with other gases which are in trace amounts like hydrogen sulfide, you know the H2S, moisture H2O and nitrogen N2 and there are some volatile organic compounds which are in very trace amounts in the biogas. So a, mixture, a gaseous mixture containing all these gases is nothing but biogas. 
So children, I hope you have understood what biogas is and what is the process that is involved in the production of biogas and what are the raw materials that are used to produce biogas. Here in the picture you can see there is slurry, energy crops, food waste. Those are the input materials to anaerobic digester and from anaerobic digester there is biogas generation. The biogas will be stored and biogas can be utilized as electricity or to replace heat. So this is the complete loop where the waste is converted to energy in the form of electricity and heat. Now if you wonder what is the stoichiometric equation of this particular process, here it is. You can see any complex uh, molecule like if you take uh, uh, lipids, proteins, like you know complex sugars if you take, those will be converted to CO2 and methane. Now what is the process that is actually involved in it? You can see in the first picture here, I have shown you in the first block, there are complex polymers, nothing but the carbohydrates, proteins, lipids. And if we are, if we are considering agriculture waste, there is cellulose, hemicellulose and lignin. Now these complex polymers are converted to simple monomers such as sugars, amino acids, fatty acids by the action of hydrolytic enzymes and this process is nothing but hydrolysis. Now these simple monomers in the next biological step will undergo acidification by the acid producers and the process here is called acidogenesis. Now there forms intermediate compounds. They are nothing but the volatile fatty acids or the carboxylic acids in addition to hydrogen. Now this is not the end of the process students. Here the intermediate compounds are then again converted to acetate, carbon dioxide and hydrogen and this process is called acetogenesis. After this process the acetate, carbo carbon dioxide, hydrogen will finally be converted to biogas which is a mixture of all the gases. Now this end process is nothing but the methanogenesis. So far, I told you the process of producing biogas from organic waste is anaerobic digestion or otherwise called as biomethanation. So this process occurs sequentially from hydrolysis step to methanogenesis step. In a single tank, the organic waste undergoes all these four steps to produce biogas from organic waste. Now here. What are the important control parameters that you have to look in order to efficiently convert organic waste to biogas? Now, let's say when you cook something at your home, when you are going to cook some, let's say rice, you have to see what is the rice and water ratio in your in your cooker and what amount of salt you have to put in and what amount, what time you have to cook for, for what time that is you call as residence time. So these are some important parameters you will be looking after when you cook some rice. Similarly, when we are uh, aiming to produce biogas from organic waste, what are the important parameters that you have to maintain in the anaerobic digester are given here. One is pH, the second one is hydraulic residence time, the next one is alkalinity, otherwise called buffering capacity. Then there is temperature, organic loading rate, there is carbon to nitrogen ratio and solids concentration, there is again intermediates concentration. So children, please remember until and unless you maintain all these parameters perfectly in an anaerobic digester, there will not be efficient biogas production. So first understand the process and then implement it. So now, till now you have understood what is biogas, what is the process involved in it and what are the control parameters that you have to focus. Now, did uh, is it a very new technology that, has, uh, that IICT only has brought in? No. Biogas is a very old technology. It is there since 50, 60 years old. But what IICT did in order to make it new and what... Uh, a scientific intervention that it did in to bring that technology in a newer fashion to the entire nation. So we will see now. So the existing biogas technology, the old biogas technology, the first pictures you can, you can see is a fixed dome, dome of digester. 
the second one is the floating dome digester these were the two digester that were there since long years in india this is practiced very efficiently in india only for the treatment of animal manures these digesters are suitable for animal manure treatment only such as if you take cow dung you take poultry droppings these digesters are suitable but if you go for food waste treatment or market vegetable waste treatment these digesters are not suitable and with these digesters the biogas yield that is the biogas output is low and the time required to convert waste to biogas is very long in these digesters and these digesters are not suitable for every kind of waste treatment so what to do should we just uh, try to use them and if they are not working properly should we just forget about anaerobic digestion should we forget about organic waste is the question you have to think so that we thought we are not going to leave it as such we took the research challenge where the conventional anaerobic digesters should be transformed to high rate anaerobic digesters so in order to do that what we have to do was the question that iict has taken up so enthusiastically because there is a clear difference you can see in the left side picture students everything is poor in conventional digester like biogas yield is low residence time is very long waste treatment capacity is small ease of operation is poor if you look at the biogas plant also the aesthetics are also poor and versatility is very poor in an uh, old conventional digesters whereas if you go for high rate anaerobic digester the biogas yield is high residence time is short waste treatment capacity is from small to large capacities you can go for treatment and ease of operation aesthetics and versatility is very good in high rate anaerobic digesters now these digesters are available in other countries why not in india so we thought this uh, high rate anaerobic digesters can be indigenized and uh, developed in india itself so iict has taken up the challenge and it has developed anaerobic gas lift reactor you can see the green tank here in the picture that is the main technology that we have developed and patented it so you know what a patent is patent is to just uh, uh, you know secure the uh, know how that we have developed okay what are the components that are involved in a anaerobic digester based biogas plant you are going to see now first is the shredder or crusher or grinder you can use then there is a feed preparation tank that is required in the biogas plant then there are pumps required then the main heart of the biogas plant is the anaerobic gas lift reactor technology then there is moisture trap hydrogen sulfide scrubber biogas flow meter biogas balloon there is compressor there is pressure tank and digestate collection tank so students if you want to go for setting up a biogas plant or if you wonder what actually has in a biogas plant then these are all the important components that are there in the biogas plant now what is the process and parameters i have already briefed you let me again give you a idea so first the organic waste are pre treated here the pre treated meaning is to reduce the size let's say if you have generated some vegetable waste let's say you have cauliflower potato and some kind of vegetables you cannot simply take that vegetable waste and put in the digester that is not going to happen you have to pre treat it you have to grind it and make it into a slurry and then you load it into the anaerobic gas lift reactor that is the technology iict has developed then after you put the organic waste in the form of slurry to the digester we will be able to get biogas as a product from the digester and in addition to this there is another product that is biomanure now what we can do with the biogas is first you can replace lpg i hope you all know what we use in our daily uh, in our kitchen to cook food we use lpg as a source of fuel to cook our food right the lpg cylinders the red colored ones you see in your houses so if we use biogas as a 
replacement for lpg you can just put aside your lpg cylinder and connect your biogas pipeline to your stove so this is how biogas can be used to replace lpg and there is another application called electricity generation from biogas you can use a generator to convert the biogas to electricity and then there is another application with biogas where you can use biogas for running the vehicles i hope you all know what is bio cng you might be knowing it is the most uh, trending word now bio cng operated vehicles so these are the three applications that you have when you convert waste to biogas now what is bio manure it is nothing but the fertilizer there are chemical fertilizers and there is organic fertilizer if you use chemical fertilizer there are some side effects that we notice generally in order to replace those chemical fertilizers the digested from the anaerobic digester can be utilized in the fields so why it is utilized because the bio manure is rich in nitrogen phosphates and potash okay now in order to happen in order to make this process from organic waste to biogas and bio manure to happen perfectly you have to maintain certain parameters at optimized cut conditions now what are those optimized conditions first is ph ph should be between 6.8 to 7.1 if it is less than that or if it is greater than 7.1 your process will be disturbed now the temperature you can see 35 plus or minus 2 degree celsius or 55 plus or minus 2 degree celsius that this is called mesophilic temperature or thermophilic temperature you can use both these temperatures to produce efficient biogas production then there is another parameter called bfa by alkalinity ratio it should be less than 0.5 then there is solids consistency which should be between 10 to 12% in an anaerobic digester and there is c by n ratio c is carbon and n is nitrogen which should be between 25 to 30 so these are the optimized conditions that you have to maintain in the digester in order to convert the organic waste to biogas and bio manure there is ammonia nitrogen you write it nh3n which should be less than 3000 mg per liter so that, that is how the process occurs now what are the type of waste that are suitable in the anaerobic gas lift reactor i told you in the conventional digesters only animal manures are suitable but the technology the anaerobic gas lift reactor that iict has developed is suitable for organic fraction of msw that is you can see the msw in the picture which contains 40 to 50% of organic content means this 40 to 50% of organic matter can be converted to biogas and bio manure then there is another waste called landfill leachate which contains 30 to 40% of organic content there is animal manures again this digester is suitable for all type of animal manures like cow dung poultry droppings horse dung and other drop other wastes also like because it has 50 to 30 15 to 30% of organic content there is another uh, class of waste that is agriculture waste agriculture crop residues like rice straw wheat straw corn cobs and all you can use to produce biogas here because the organic content in these wastes is very high that is between 60 to 70% if you see the cooked and uncooked food waste you are very much familiar with this kind of waste i guess because it is produced in a, in your own homes every day which contains 70 to 80% of organic content the last one is industrial effluents uh i hope you have studied about the industrial effluents also which contains some 20 to 50% of organic content so no, no waste is a waste i want you to remember this sentence no waste is a waste it is always a resource which can efficiently be converted to energy and nutrients now let's see what is the detailed process that is involved first the raw material is again the organic waste that has to be size reduced now the question should come into your mind what is the equipment that you are going to use to size reduce it here we can use a sh shredder crusher or a grinder in order to give you an idea about what it actually looks like i have put one picture of a grinder here then 
the reduced organ the size reduced organic waste is made into into a slurry what is a slurry you know i guess what do we need in order to prepare a slurry we need water and some chemicals here to adjust the ph then the slurry is fed to the digester what do we need to do that activity to in, in order to feed the slurry to the digester we need slurry pumps otherwise called as mud pumps then there under there the organic waste is anaerobically digested by the action of microorganisms that is the mixed microbial consortia in the beginning slides i have explained you there are four class of microorganisms which undergoes hydrolysis acidogenesis acetogenesis and methanogenesis all these organisms coexist in the mi mixed microbial consortia resulting in the conversion of organic waste to biogas and biomanure that we call it digestate now the digestate comes out from the digester in the form of a liquid now this liquid can be utilized as a, a, a fertilizer directly or it can be dried up and the solid manure can be used now what do we do with the biogas biogas is compressed using a biogas compressor or it can be used for power generation using a biogas generator children are you following me i understand you are with me from the beginning from organic waste to compression and power generation then the compressed biogas is stored in the pressure tank from the pressure tank the biogas is given to the biogas stove where we can comfortably cook our food using the biogas now the power generated using the biogas generator can be stored in the off grid and then it can be used for street lighting or many appliances at your home for that matter anywhere else you can utilize the power that is generated from organic waste so uh, by now i understand you are very much uh, clear with the process as well as the technology that is developed by iict now let me give you some numbers the first flow i have shown you the organic waste is converted to biogas for the replacement of heat and the second flow i have shown you where the organic waste is converted to biogas for power generation now if you see what are the conditions that are required in order to utilize biogas for cooking purpose here the biogas should be pressurized uh, at a pressure between 4 to 8 bar and how much biogas will be uh, how much lpg lpg will be replaced using biogas you can see the number 1 cubic meter of biogas is equal to 0.4 kg of lpg all right now for the electricity also you can see the, the biogas generator operates at ambient pressure and the 1 meter cube of biogas is equal to 1 unit of electricity that is kilowatt hour now the digester that is generated from the anaerobic digester can be utilized as a fertilizer in the agriculture fields to improve the crop productivity now i now this is the interesting part where you will get the whole idea about what i have explained here it goes hello children my name is shobha all of us love to eat fruits and vegetables right Good. Fruits and vegetables are a great source of vitamins, minerals and fiber. But have you ever thought what wonder can their waste do? Let's watch. In vegetable and fruit markets, large kitchens and restaurants, tons of wet organic waste is generated every day due to various reasons. Transportation and disposal of this waste in open lands and landfills is a huge environmental issue. Children, let us see how we can convert the waste into wealth. CSIR, Indian Institute of Chemical Technology (IICT), in an endeavor to convert waste to wealth, has developed and patented a high-end biodegradable technology. Based on an anaerobic gas reactor (AGR) for the generation of methane-rich biogas, 
and nutrient rich bio manure anaerobic gas lift reactor technology is a novel high rate process by which microorganisms such as methanosarcina break down biodegradable material in the absence of oxygen into valuable biogas the anaerobic digester was improvised with gentle mixing without the external mechanical mixer and centered on liquid and gaseous hydrodynamics through pressure management across the digester CSIR IICT Hyderabad with the help of state and central government agencies like DBT and DAM have installed a biogas plant at Dr B R Ambedkar Vegetable Market in Boentalli Secunderabad Dr Gangadhar Rao Anupuju chief scientist at IICT an expert in the area of waste management has developed this technology Dr Rao specializes in the field of biomethanation anaerobic digestion and biological gas purification higher product output lower footprint semi automatic plant operation and highly replicable potential are some of the noticeable features of this technology children in this part we have introduced anaerobic gas lift reactor technology in the next part we will see anaerobic gas lift reactor process and its uses children okay i'm back again children i hope you are very clear now with the anaerobic digestion technology and the benefits that are associated to it now there is one part called identifying the problem there is another part called providing a solution but are these two enough i i don't think these two are enough because unless and until the society accepts your solution that is not success so whether the society has accepted our technology or not i'll tell you now here i am showing you waste to energy from kitchen to kitchen this i have given you because the first plant based on this technology was installed in one of the largest kitchens that is operated by the akshaya patra foundation in karnataka they asked us okay do you have identified the problem and you are providing a solution but how efficiently this is functioning in the field whether the waste can be converted and given back to the kitchen or not was their apprehension so we cannot simply say it by word right we cannot simply say by sentences so what we thought is we will ask them to put a plant in their own kitchen and they have accepted it then we took that as a challenge here because unless and until the technology is proven at bigger scale real in the real field it is not called a success so in 2015 the first commercial plant based on this technology was installed in the kitchen where 1000 kg of food waste which is a mix of cooked food waste and uncooked food waste was converted to biogas and again biomanure in the figure you can see the organic waste is given to the anaerobic gas lift reactor where biogas is produced and biomanure is produced the biogas is used in the kitchen you can see the blue color flame in the uh, stove you can see the blue flame the blue flame indicates there is lot of methane in the biogas all right children so if there is more methane the calorific value of the biogas is more so the biogas in this particular kitchen was utilized to cook food whereas the bio manure was utilized in their own uh, 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 kitchen premises to give good uh, growth for the plants so this is one such plant in our own campus unless and until we demonstrate at our own campus this will not be fully 
uh, you know, uh, demonstrated to all the people. So that's why, in order to treat our own kitchen waste in the campus, we have installed a 250 kg per day biogas plant in our own campus, where the waste that is generated in the canteen is treated and the biogas generated is given back to the kitchen. So this is another plant at the Akshay Patra Foundation. So the uh, the Akshay Patra Foundation operates about uh, 44 kitchens across India, and there we have installed about 15 biogas plants in 15 of their kitchens. Though, so the first success in 2015 led to the uh, 15 biogas plant op plant installations till date. So this is what I call success. Now. The conversion of biogas to electricity. In the previous slide, you have seen the waste is converted to energy and given back to the kitchen. Here, the waste is converted to electricity. But what is the type of waste that we have used is market and vegetable waste. You can see in the left side, the organic fraction of MSW, about five tons of organic fraction of MSW is converted to electricity. This plant is in Jawahar Nagar in Hyderabad. Whereas this plant is in Bowen Palli vegetable market yard where about 10 tons, 10,000 kg of waste is treated every day and the biogas is given back to the market yard in the form of electricity. And the digestate that is the bio manure is given to the farmers uh, at some cost to improve the crop yield in their agriculture farmlands. Now this is another uh, video in continuation to the previous where we told you that there is a Bowen Palli biogas plant about 10 tons of waste market and vegetable waste is converted to biogas and electricity. Now you can see the actually happening uh, process in the plant. Children, in the first part we have introduced anaerobic gas lift reactor technology. In this part, we will see how the AGR reactor installed in the vegetable market works. About 10 tons of market and vegetable waste is generated in the market every day. Waste is collected and brought to the plant in the market. The waste is shredded crushed, ground and made into slurry by the addition of water. The feed slurry is fed into a biodigester which is subjected to be in contact with the bacteria responsible for the generation of biodigesters. The feed slurry undergoes biological reactions under suitable operating conditions resulting in the generation of methane gas and biomanure. Let us see how electricity is generated from biogas. The biogas produced is passed into a combustion engine which converts it to mechanical energy powering an electric generator to produce electricity. Every day this reactor produces 400 to 500 units of electricity, 30 kilograms of LPG and 5 kiloliters of biomanure. Children, the produced biogas based electricity is used for street lighting in the market yard and LPG is used in the market canteen for cooking.
there are about 20 plants operational throughout india with capacity yeah okay now you can see the india map here the green one shows already the plant have the plants have been installed and the red one shows the plants are in installation if you count there are about 31 biogas plants based on this iict's anaerobic gas lift reactor technology installed across india in 11 states children isn't this a success yes it is now you have seen the bovenpalli biogas plant picture and actually the bovenpalli biogas plant in the video now you see the you see another another picture on tv where uh, in the radio the prime minister of india the honorable prime minister of india is saying that the waste is converted into gold using iict's anaerobic gas lift reactor technology now this is what i call is one of our greatest achievement till date now uh, seeing the efforts that iict has taken in developing this technology not only developing commercializing this technology and making people accept this technology which is evident from the 31 installations csir the council has given iict the award called the csir technology award certificate of merit in 2021 now there are some newspaper clippings I have shown you here which have proudly mentioned that IICT has developed this technology and commercialized this technology in a greater way. Now about the environment, you can see the flow here, the plants from the plants let's say during the photosynthesis process the plants consume carbon dioxide and the resources from the plants and animals are given to the industries and from the industries there is some product out. If the product is used by us, there is some organic waste generated. Now this waste can be utilized in our anaerobic digestion technology for the generation of biogas. Now this biogas can be utilized in transport and energy sector where again there is a CO2 emission but that is less compared to the fossil based fuel emission a co2 emission so here there is no extra carbon dioxide that is released into the atmosphere so this technology this biogas technology makes the environment carbon neutral but not carbon positive whereas if you go for fossil fuel based energy uh, substitutes the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere increases making the global temperature even warmer you might have heard about global warming so i leave this end to you to scout more about global warming how biogas technology is helpful in reducing the global warming impact now let me summarize what this indigenization of technology has given benefits to the society first is renewable energy generation the second one is employment creation in the plants there is some manpower required right so there is employment creation there is scientific disposal of waste proven then there is environmental protection then we are less reliable on fossil based fuels the society is clean and green if you use for if you use these by these kind of biogas technologies and there is some revenue generation from biogas and biomanure sales if we are using bio manure from the anaerobic digesters, then the soil fertility is greatly improved. Overall, if we have all these in place, then our health will be good, right? Health benefits are also there. So children, using this kind of uh, waste to energy technologies, creating wealth out of waste, we are able to get all these benefits. Most importantly, the indigenization of technology has created a huge impact here. So, uh, if you have any doubts, you can contact us here. And if you want to visit our plants, there are 31 plants. You can visit any of our plants. You are most welcome. If you have any queries, any time, shoot to us. We are happy to answer you. Thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Samina. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Uh, it was a wonderful presentation by you. Uh, children, we have in our midst uh, Dr. A.P. Jairaman, who is uh, 
was a scientist, uh, graduated from the Elite Scientific Officers Training School and he worked in the Baba Atomic Research Center. He was formerly the scientific attache to Indian ambassador to Japan. He was a chief engineer, technical advisor, chief executive, chairman of II, Indian Institute of Material Management. He was also a professor of water technology, Singapore. And he is also the chairman for the National Center for Science Communicators, President Steam Academy, and also an advisor to many schools. Author of 15 popular science books, over 3,000 science articles, and has conducted more than 35,000 hours of science talks. His engagements in US, UK, China, Brazil, many countries and throughout India. Has won an International Copernicus Award, National Manubai Shah Award, and State Awards for Science Population and Edge Communication. So, I request Dr. Jairaman, sir, to kindly speak a few words, please. Sir, kindly unmute yourself. Sir, you are not audible. Sir, you are not audible. No, sir. Sir, you are muted, no? No, no. Oh, you are muted, everybody. Muted. Ah, okay. Oh, sir, now you can speak, sir. I think you unmuted yourself. Not, not, not able to hear, sir. In. Jairaman. Jairaman. Jairaman, sir. I think there is some technical issue with Dr. Jairaman sir's uh, system. Yeah. yeah. So I think we'll take the questions now. Children, if you have any questions, please do ask all the three uh, eminent scientists from IICT who are sitting there. Uh, and one more request is, if anybody wants to visit the Boyanpalli market or the Jawahar Nagar uh, biogas plant, please do send a mail to Indian Development Foundation or the SMA, I mean the WhatsApp number given to you. We will arrange the visit to of your uh, school to these plants where you can physically and practically see the whole implementation of this project. So anybody have a question, please raise your hand and we'll take your questions now. Yeah, they can go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there is a school, I think. Your team, Briksh. Yeah. Yeah, please go ahead. Please. I am Akta from uh, St. Joseph High School. I am from 9th B. And I was wondering if this technology is only part of India or has it originated from a different country and we are modifying it to our own. Good question. I've told you in the presentation that the process, the anaerobic digestion process is very old. And during the differences that I've shown in the conventional and high rate digesters, the photo that I've shown was from the abroad, the European nations, Germany, Netherlands, these are countries develop anaerobic digesters. So if we want to import the technology, it requires a lot of money, right? Why we have to give money to other countries? Why not we develop? That was the challenge we have taken and we have developed this technology. Now it is make in India, made in India technology. Okay, we need not import any of this element from abroad. Everything we can make it, everything, everything we can install by our own. Okay, the process is very old, which is greatly improvised by us. That is the uniqueness of this technology. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. Greek plan. Yeah. 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 So, um, so I'm Sai of. So I'm Sai Shranch of class nine, and uh, I was wondering, what are the exact uh, biochemical changes 
uh, done that make the modern method of um, what do you say biogas production different from the conventional what exactly makes it better are there any chemical added chemicals involved any specific strains of bacteria or fungi involved no the process entirely is same if you go for conventional digesters or if we are maintaining in our digester but there are some certain i'll answer okay. there are certain aspects like there is no mixing in the conventional digester but in our digester there is mixing given and there is uh, all type of waste cannot be added into the con conventional digesters but in our digester all types of waste can be added and when the ph is less like as i told you the optimized ph is 7 if it is less than that then only there is a requirement to add chemicals otherwise there is no need to add any chemical in our digester okay and the biochemical pathway that i have shown you the hydrolysis acidogenesis acetogenesis and methanogenesis all this takes place in conventional digesters also but what are the control parameters and how efficiently you are controlling it is the crux here okay in conventional digesters we cannot maintain all those parameters properly but in our digester in the high rate digesters there is a provision that we can control each and every parameter efficiently that the process takes place smoothly all right thank next you ma'am next question yeah next question if you have any if they have i have बायोगैस टू इलेक्ट्रिसिटी Excuse me, I am Amina Shirin from Jaipal Medical School. I have yeah, a question. Please carry on. Yeah. Yeah. Kindly, kindly repeat the question, please. Ah, yes. For some time, oh. yeah, we lost you. How are you converting the biogas into electricity? That converter you have told it. Yeah, yeah. There is a biogas genset. Biogas generator is there. you send like you know the biodiesel engines are there similarly there is biogas generator where the fuel is biogas there is a turbine inside it okay there some process happens where the biogas will be transformed into electricity you can see the working of the biogas genset okay generator <laughs> um ma'am uh, we have another yes. doubt what yes. are the future prospects uh, if uh, someone wants to go ahead uh, in this industry basically both uh, business wise and job wise is there any specific future uh, courses that should be taken uh, for this industry or what is it exactly see if you want to enter into this field yeah complete complete and uh, for entrepreneurial support as well ma'am that's it okay the support wise we are always there you can come and ask us anything we will be there for you and regarding the business model and all the business model is already created now if you want to become an entrepreneur in this particular field and take up this particular technology you should be able to understand what this process is actually and what biogas uh, technology involves i have shown you each and every component right so you have to study about all those components you have to study about the type of waste and the quantity of generation and you have to ensure how the biogas is utilized whether it is heat utilization or electricity generation and if at all you are generating where you are going to use it okay if you have waste and if you are not able to find a solution to properly utilize the biogas it is not a feasible uh, it is not an ideal option okay you have to see both ways if there is some waste you have to also able to make sure that the biogas is utilized properly either in kitchen or somewhere all right if there is no proper utility of biogas then your business model will not be a proper remunerative one 
Okay. Yes, ma'am. What about so, job opportunities exactly, ma'am? Like, yeah, are there yeah. any specific courses that should be taken in college to pursue a job in this industry? Uh, yes, yes. If you can take your, yeah, yeah. We we'll request our chief scientist, Dr. A. G. Rao. He will speak. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, good morning to all of you. Yeah. There are actually see, any generally science or engineering graduates like you no. Know, uh bsc or msc like sciences any group like biology chemistry uh, maybe physics also to some extent uh, if they would like to take interest and uh, environment environmental sciences especially biotechnology people all the, and in engineering chemical environmental engineering civil engineering all these people can take up this work even mechanical engineering to some extent also electrical mechanical also so they can get trained up only thing is that exposure is required so opportunities are available now government of india announced a program called satat that is sustainable alternative towards uh, transportation and they are introducing instead of cng they are introducing a cbg compressed biogas so now they are planning to put approximately around 6000 biogas plants across india the minimum capacity of each plant will be in the range of around 5000 to 6000 meter cube of biogas per day from different ways across india already 25 plants are installed actually in fact actually we are getting so many queries asking for manpower any skilled manpower is there they want to recruit actually so all these people there are plenty of opportunities available in fact actually we have been passed out from our uh, school here in our department all of them got very good of uh, jobs immediately after completion of their phd or mtech so there are plenty of opportunities actually you can look around actually any guidance further is required that we are there thanks a lot sir for the information uh, one last question sir what is the exact like rough budget required to make uh, such for uh, doing uh, biogas generation like per uh, like one center for example what would be the average uh, budget for constructing one and yeah depends upon uh, capacity generally for example uh, if you are treating let us say one ton of food waste for example typically we have installed plants in akshapatra foundation see must have told okay, dr samina master question so, dr savina master show showed you in the presentation so there are around 12 plants operating across india most of the plants are one ton food waste capacity from the kitchen so that 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 cost is in the range of approximately 50 lakhs and we can get back that entire capital cost within 3 years in the form of biogas revenue for the application of lpg replace lpg and my manure also we can sell one liter is 1 rupee actually now it is they are selling outside in the bakshapatra plantation using themselves for their like you know growing vegetables so typically 3 to 4 3 and 1/2 year payback period the capital cost is in the range of around 50 lakhs and operating cost is in the range of approximately 3 lakhs per annum there is a question from mr gadda mumesh mumeshwar in a chat is there a similar technology to treat plastic waste yes there is a uh, technology for plastic waste we are not working our uh, uh, our sister laboratory is there in dehradun in industry petroleum so they are converting plastic waste to biofuel and other value added products so already one plant 10 ton per day plant is working in delhi so you can just go through the literature it is possible it is possible and i also understand that there are one or two plants uh you uh, started with small entrepreneurs from the 1 to 2 tons capacity plastic waste for the generation of bio biofuel and i think carbon so they are selling them they are make that is a profitable venture it seems it is a closed loop thermal that is a thermal system basically thermal system catalytic thermal system sir i have one doubt sir uh, there is lot of stubble burning happening in the north because of which there it seems there is lot of air pollution in delhi can this technology be used there because i saw in one of the slide that this uh, agricultural residue produces 60 to 70% of organic content so why are yeah 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 it is possible now a lot of efforts uh, lot of efforts are being taken so i have recently seen one place in gujarat where approximately around uh, i can say 500 tons of uh, 
this uh, agriculture waste is being treated for the generation of approximately around 20 tons of cbg one of the biggest plant in the asia that is actually they spent approximately 700 crores for enclosure plants and they are supplying cbg to all commercial companies and such plants are coming up in haryana and punjab area uh, I, they are they are becoming very popular nowadays and uh, that is possible and those are all coming up nowadays coming up nothing means it is a starting phase Maybe end up after two, three years completely all the agriculture waste in the North India will be utilized perfectly for either for CPG production, compressed bio bags production, or for making the biochar, or for making the pellets for like, you know, uh, giving it to thermal power generation companies. There is a question about methane gas, which is equally dangerous to our environment. Can you please tell me how it is being managed? Question from PBDAV school. What is that, sir? Can you repeat that question? Organic waste releases a large amount of methane gas, which is equally dangerous to our environment, it seems. Can you please tell us how is it being managed? Yeah. In fact, actually, that is the biggest one of the global warming uh, gas, actually. Uh, like, you know, CO2, compared to CO2, CH4 is 21 times more harmful global warming potential. But that is the biggest issue, you know, that the land fields and all these things, like fields and uh, fields everywhere, no, the gas is, gases are coming into the open atmosphere. That is why when you use it in like an anaerobic digestion or something like this in this process, the gas will be utilized. The gas will be utilized. Only CO2 will be evolved actually. But CO2 also, nowadays people are also utilizing that CO2 also again for multiple purposes. Like dry ice and like you know, bravery applications and all these things. Despite the fact that even if you emit the CO2 to the atmosphere, it is not like anthropogenic CO2. It is a natural CO2. That is why it is um, the net effect is like zero effect. It is zero carbon uh, emission actually. So carbon neutral technology it is called. So that is the reason why government is very seriously adopting these technologies in order to avoid the emissions of CH4 to the atmosphere. Uh, there is yeah, a question from uh, Birla Open Mind, sir. In the old biogas digesters, they were dome shaped, but in the new digester, the tops are flat. So, does the shape of the digesters matter? Yeah, no, it is like you know, conventional digester is like that actually. They made very, very simple designs actually. But there is commercial application, those digesters are not really. And that shape of the digester also matters in terms of pressure and other aspects actually. So, there are different, like it is very lengthy to answer all these, actually very detailed engineering questions actually. But actually in the, in our digester flat is there, you can have a dome shape also, there is no problem. You can put the top also, balloon also you can install on the top of the digester also. There are different possibilities are there. That dome shape has nothing to do with the entire digester technology. It is one component only. There's also a question from uh, another sir. Well, can this biogas be used for vehicle fuel for aeroplane? Aeroplane? So far, no. <laughs> so, so far, no. Because air, that jet fuel is like you know, liquid fuel. Jet fuel is liquid, liquid fuel, no? Good that is a jet fuel is like liquid fuel. Like, yeah. you know, now they are making bioethanol, no? And uh, there is a, some positive change and from their jet fuel they are be making actually. From the, even from the agriculture waste and any other waste, no? Jet trough of waste and all these things, they are making jet fuel actually. But this is the ga gaseous fuel. That's why it cannot be used. Sir, my name is Jonathan from DAV School. Uh, I have a doubt. Like in the f uh, vegetables, it creates a foul smell when it's... Uh, Spoil no sir. Doesn't doesn't that harm the people working at the uh, plant? And will it not create the uh, will it not create some false smell while burning? Yeah, you are exactly right. When we are keeping it open and dumping it just like that, no, because a process called putrefaction, it will get a lot of bad smell and all these things. That is the reason why as soon as the waste is generated, immediately needs to be processed. It should be grounded, mashed like a slurry and sent to the digester, closed anaerobic digester. So the waste is we are generating energy, bioenergy in the form of methane actually. So during the process of mixing, no little smell will be there. That is very, very compared to very, very less uh, compared to the open dumping of the waste actually. That is a good person. But uh, we are operating these plants, almost 30 plants across India. 
very very less complaints in terms of smell we are getting actually so even international kitchens like you know akshapatra foundation has international kitchen high standard kitchen for the food in that kitchen also we are operating this uh, only to the grinding operations are only for maybe water one hour after the entire plant is closed loop plant actually so that is the reason why that is the reason why we have to process this to this process instead of just open dumping that is a good question actually thank you sir so we'll take the last one or two questions last one or two questions please we are already overshooting the time for a part of your games i have a small doubt like uh, can we make all the uh, all the things in our daily life with all that your question is not clear ma can we make all things in our daily life sir with biogas all things in yeah yeah theoretically it is possible for example you are using all energy applications what i can say for example if you are using a cooking you know a cooking we can definitely use instead of lpg you can use biogas and electricity you can generate all your home can be electrified there is no doubt and you can use biogas for your vehicle so all these things are possibility and it is coming coming to be true over a period of time going to be true because in vegetable market yard just one example bovenpalli vegetable ka market yard we are giving electricity for their all lighting and everything applications we are giving biogas for their lpg replacement for the cooking and all these things so already two applications i demonstrated third application biogas compressed biogas is for fuel so all these things in daily life energy applications yes definitely can be used so thank you very much sir thank you for your time and uh, the beautiful presentation done by the team of iic city hello uh, yes who is it uh, good morning to all the all the scientists present over here actually i wonder that uh, what are the major difference in the anaerobic digest made in india and abroad or are they similar yeah it is a good question uh, anaerobic digestion process is same because it is a science no science throughout the world is the same only okay the process of anaerobic digestion under without oxygen could you briefly explain anaerobic gaseous technology yeah that i am coming to you i am coming to you so so anaerobic digestion science remains the same across the globe so it is a process of Can generating you your Sir is answering your question. Can you please listen, please? Yeah. Okay. The process remains same across the globe. It is a like you know the process is simple in terms of you know generation of methane and CO2 is a combination of that is called biogas. In the absence of oxygen, a group of microbial consortia called anaerobic microbia converts this organic matter into these to CH4 and CO2. Anaerobic gases. i think your voice is breaking uh, what we'll do is if you have any questions you can just write a mail yes yeah, better, better write a mail write a mail hello uh, i think we'll uh, end the session here if you have further more questions you i'll give you a mail id you can just shoot a mail with your questions and we will uh, uh, request the team of iict to answer your questions in sure. detail sure. i think that would be fine So thank you very much for attending the session I thank Dr Watsala Dr Samina Dr AG Rao Garu for this uh, time and effort you have put in for the beautiful <laughs> session sir thank you and if Jeravan sir is I mean if his mic is okay I think uh, he can say the final few words are you tight not able to hear sir still yeah thank you thank you Thank you madam thank you children thank you i hope you had a wonderful session if any of the schools are interested in visiting these plants please do send a mail we'll provide the mail id and the mobile number to you and we'll arrange the visits for you thank you very much have a nice day thank you yeah thank you students yeah have a good day right bye bye bye